What's going on, guys? It's Mano Destra 777 and we're back inside of Destiny. Uh, sort of. Here's the deal, guys. A lot of you have been asking how I do my streaming setup. How do I uh, get all of my videos together? How do I edit my videos? How do I get such great quality video and sound in my streams? You can see that this is not just a video gaming setup. This is my music setup. You can see this is my drum set. It is awesome. If you came here from one of my drum cumber videos, thank you so much for checking it out. I will be doing more when the Taking King Soundtrap drops a little bit later today. I'm super stoked for that. But you can see this setup is very very, very versatile, and I use it for three or four different things, not just gaming. So I'm primarily going to talk about the gaming side of things, but I'm going to show you how it's all integrated because it's not super complex, but it works out really well. This is the heart of the entire thing. This is my 2014 MacBook Pro, and some of you may wonder why I don't use a Windows machine. Well, the reason I don't use a Windows machine is because I found in my programming and what I need, um, Mac works better for my music production. So because of that, I have to use that also for my gaming as well. You can see here that I have a couple of different plugs going on. I've got my VGA monitor. This is going to go to my second monitor, which I'll show you in just a second. And then this is my wired internet connection. I think the biggest thing in streaming is to make sure that you have a wired connection. I found that when you're trying to stream wirelessly, it just does not work. I don't recommend it. I would definitely get a wired connection. But this is my baby. You can see here that this is my second monitor. It's a little bit different because I use this primary monitor right here for watching how the stream health is, and I use this one for chat, um, invitations, and things like that. So kind of going back and forth between those is not as crazy as you think. Um, it's not too crazy, but it's just something I had to get used to. Some of you may have some questions about software that you use. Well, the primary standard that a lot of people use is either XSplit or the Elgato capture system or what I like to use, which is free which is OBS, this is what I like to use. It's called Open Broadcaster Software. It's free to use. You can see on Mac, they're not even at a 1.0 release, but it still works really well. It's mostly for Windows users, but I found ways to make it work. You can have different scenes that you can set up here. You can see I've got my YouTube clear video, my YouTube normal video. Some of you maybe recognize this from when I'm about to start my streams, but I wanna let you guys know that I am about to start. You can see you can set up different pictures and different logos and things like that. I can move that around. It's really cool to use. It's really great to use. And some of you may ask, how do I get all of my images and stuff together? That again is a free program for Mac called GIMP. But this is my MacBook Pro. It works great for me. There's lots of great Windows solutions out there as well. But what I do is I capture the video on OBS and then I use iMovie to edit the, edit the stuff. And I bet all of you have seen this when you came into this video. I have an intro and an outro permanently pasted into the video. So what I need to do whenever I wanna put up some new content, I just drop it in the middle of those two things, add any audio that I want, and bam. I've got my YouTube video good to go. It's very easy to share. There's a share button right above where the video is. You can see it just right above. Um, there's a thing that says share, and you can share it to YouTube. You can share it in HD. It is fantastic. In addition, I use a program called Handbrake because when you record things in OBS, um, not streaming things, but when you record things, you have to put them into an MP4 file for iMovie to read it. But this program, Handbrake, is again free, and essentially I can use this to get the video from OBS into the kind that I need for uh, OBS. In addition, whenever I need to do with some extra sound, um, I use GarageBand. In fact, I'm using the program right now to record my voice. It's cool because I can control the EQ, the squeeze, the dynamics, all the sound quality things that make my voice sound decent when I'm recording. So that's how I do the software setup, guys. That's all the software that I use. If you have questions, drop them in the comment sections below, and I will give you as many pointers as I can. Let's talk about some hardware. This is my 29-inch display from Acer. Beautiful, very low latency. This is my 27-inch from Acer. Um, this was my older monitor, and all I did was I kind of put the two together. They're both very low latency, low lag, and they look great, and I have them set up side by side. This is the industry standard Logitech C920. You can get it at any Best Buy, as well as a pretty firm, sturdy camera stand. You can see I've got my Mighty Mouse there for all my editing. And now some of you may wonder what I use for monitoring my stream. 
I just use my iPad here, but right now I'm watching Stephen Colbert, which is amazing. And if you haven't seen the new Late Show with Stephen Colbert, it's amazing. But I watch the stream right there. It works great for me. Let's go ahead and check out my PS4 and my Xbox. Yes, I have them stacked on top of each other, but the cooling fans are completely opposite, so they don't overheat or anything else like that. I've had this for months and it's been no problem. Some of you may recognize the silver cup that I use all the time, as well as my uh, blanket that I used to use to frame my shots when I was streaming at first. But let's talk about how we get the PS4 and the Xbox One connected into my computer. Well, I don't like to mess around with a lot of cables, so I have an HDMI switcher that I got from Target for I think 30 bucks. What's cool about it is that I don't have to mess with any cords. I can select the different outputs and then I can put them out to my capture card. So this is the one for my Xbox One and this is the one for my PS4. So all I have to do is push that button and it sends it out to that output which goes to my capture card, which I'll show you in a second. So right now I'm gonna push the button. We're gonna get it over to my PS4. It takes about five to seven seconds for it to load up and you can actually see it loads up on my computer first. You can see my dancing Titan there doing the hammer uh, right now, but that's on my PS4. So, and you can see I went from PS4 to Xbox with no complications. So now I'm gonna go switch back to Xbox and with a push of one button, five and seven seconds, you can see it just switches it. And Boom, you can see again, OBS goes with it too. So it's very simple to use. You can't do this on most capture cards, but you can use it on the capture card that I am using. And I think that a lot of people are really interested in simple solutions. This is a simple, cheap solution that works really well. Let's talk about sound. I have a set of Bose headphones that are absolutely beautiful. They're in ear um, and I like them because they're light. I can take them out if I wanna listen to other music. I can do that, but I can also chat with other people in the game that I want to. And what's important is that you get the Samsung Android one um, because of the way that the connections work. If you get an Apple one, you might not be able to use it with the two controllers. But the one that I have, I did a little bit of research and I can use it for PS4 and for my Xbox. But basically, <clears throat> there's a plug-in on both of those, the 3.45 millimeter headphone jack that works really well. And what's cool about the Xbox One is that I've got a little adapter that allows me to change sounds mute. And I don't believe that PS4 has one. I think Best Buy has a generic solution, but I haven't picked it up yet. So that is the headphones. They work beautifully for me and they're awesome. Let's talk about my microphone that I use for sound. This is an Audio-Technica condenser mic with a shock mount. It is beautiful. You will notice it is not a USB connection. It is an XLR. Again, I do music production, so I can't always just plug things into a computer. Sometimes I have to plug them into a mixing board, so I need to have that versatility, but you can certainly get a USB version of this for your computer. It gets great quality sound and it works great for me. Having the shock mount keeps it from getting extra sounds from the keyboard or tapping, and you can see it, I've got it on like a cheap $15 stand that I got at, uh, I think like Guitar Center or something like that, but it works very, very well. It's beautiful, it is high quality, it's professional. Again, some of you may wanna just get a USB mic because it's cheaper and easier, but that's totally fine. But I like it because it hooks into my computer, it's super easy, super great. If you want some information about my drum kit, this is a Roland TK25V, KV, excuse me, and this works great. It's an electronic drum set. Since I live in an apartment, it's very important for me to not make my neighbors angry. Um, but anyway, that's my drum set. Let's get over to the capture card, which many of you might be interested in. This is a Magewell USB capture card with USB 3.0. It's important to have that 3.0 because the connectivity is so much faster. That gets a signal, I send it out to my computer and it works great. I, it's very simple to use. It basically takes any video signal and sends it out. So for example, when I do use the different selections on my uh, uh, HDMI switcher, it sends it out to my USB, which sends, sends it to my screen. Very simple, very easy, and it also sends it to my computer. Some of you are wondering how I got my microphone to connect to my computer. Well, I use a USB uh, interface, and this is the Scarlett 2i2. It's 2i2 because it has a left side and a right side, and those two sides allow it to get stereo sound, so it gets really good quality sound. It works very well, and when I want to hook up my drum set to record, I just use these two, I replace those two um, with these two, and boom, I've got my drum set sound into my computer. 
Additionally, I have a number of external hard drives, these two right here, that I use to keep video on there because I don't want to take my entire hard drive on my Macintosh. In addition, you can see I have a couple of USB 3.0 hubs that I use to connect all of the different pieces together, but that's not too crazy, it's pretty simple. There's only a couple of jacks on your MacBook Pro, so I like to utilize those to make my space works. Now this is my green screen. You can see this is not super high quality. This is not super, super crazy. This is just some basic muslin material that's 3.0. You can see it's got some wrinkles and stuff in it, but I'm able to achieve the green screen effect because of these lights. Now, many people have spent up to $250 or $400 on crazy lighting setups, but these two lights, I got at Ikea. Each one of them were $8 a piece. And what's important is that you get even light that goes upon your green screen. Now I use this black piece over here, uh, over here. You can see I've got my beautiful deck over on this side, but I use this to keep out any excess light that might get in the way of my green screen. Again, my deck is beautiful, but I don't want that light getting into the gaming setup. And that's how I do my green screen, guys. But basically for 16 bucks and the material, it works out great. And then this is just a basic Office Max chair that's super, super comfy. So guys, this is is my streaming setup. This also is my music production setup. You can see my keyboards and stuff like that. And hey, if you've got questions on that, let me know. But this setup works great for me. It's very versatile. It works not just for gaming, but it works for uh, my music production, drum set, everything else like that. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments section below, and I'll try and answer as many of them as I can. So guys, if you like something in this video, please hit the like button, please hit that subscribe button. I'm gonna be coming to you with tons of Taken King. It is dropping in less than 12 hours. So until then, Guardians, I will see you in the universe of Destiny.